So I believe I'm passing to Julian now. X, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, special effects for Diablo 3 and some of the thinking that went into the things that you've seen in the demo. So right at the beginning, uh, we adopted some overriding goals, uh, sort of fundamental philosophies that we wanted to follow uh, when we were creating the graphics for these things. Uh, and so I'm going to give you a, a description of what they were. Uh, the first one was that the, the players, uh, that the Diablo 3 is a highly visceral experience where players experience brutal combat and wield godlike power. And the other one was that uh, characters should do crazy things, express more personality and more backstory than past Diablo games. And so the goal of special effects in, in doing that is to punch these things up really loudly and to do what the characters and maybe the backgrounds and even the design couldn't do by itself. So uh, with this whole godlike power notion in mind, uh, let's uh, jump ahead and take a look at uh, what we've done for some of the player skills. So what we do when we want to get uh, start working on these graphics uh, for the skills is we take all this information that we can get from design and from the concept departments and even from ourselves uh, as effects artists, and we just sort of start bouncing the idea of the skill back and forth verbally and we try to come up with, we try to actually top each other uh, up a little bit, try to one up one another. Like, who can come up with the most crazy description of this thing that says what it is but reinforces what that character is about? So, for instance, we might, uh, when talking about the barbarian, we would say things like, when he leaps, he lands with the force of a small bomb, or when he charges, he breaks the sound barrier. Uh, when he, he can hit the ground so hard, he causes seismic explosions. So you can see that those things are really physically oriented descriptions. And from there, we would go on to actually make the graphics. But we did even more for the bar. We added uh, this ability of his to like, tap into his own lineage uh, um, through the power of the ancients, whom you may remember from Diablo II expansion. Uh, and so he has this other skill called Hammer of the Ancients, which is where he sort of wields this giant like, god hammer, which at first seemed kind of mystical to us, but the bottom line there is that he's still swinging like, this gigantic hammer, which is a really physical thing to be doing. So it works out. So uh, on the flip side, for the witch doctor, uh, obviously we wanted to get a really rich voodoo vibe. Hit it one more. One more. But uh, we wanted to avoid that straight up magic cast your feel, where he's not just cast, uh, conjuring things out of thin air. So witch doctors just don't channel magic. Uh, they take real world objects and infuse them as sort of a voodoo magic. So going back to that description, that verbal descriptive method, we would say things like, okay, he's going he's gonna to throw a shrunken head filled with some kind of alchemical cocktail. Uh, he's going to create swarms of locusts by blowing on voodoo dust from his palm or he's going to sprinkle dust in the air and cause illusions that frighten monsters away. And of course, you're not a witch doctor unless you're doing something with zombies. Zombies, witch doctors, they go together. But here we didn't want to just do straight up zombies, you know, the kind of slow wandering around humanoid zombies. We wanted something with a twist. Uh, so um, we got that by basically taking normal concepts and then just sort of smashing them in together with the idea of zombies. And so when we had this idea of doing a, a skill like kind of like firewall, uh, we sort of twisted that with zombies, and that's how we came up with zombie wall. And then other ideas were a little bit more straightforward. Um, so we got this idea that, you know, if a man's best friend is a dog, then a witch doctor's best friend is sort of this zombie dog thing, which is what became the mongrel. And the only thing better than a zombie dog would be an exploding zombie dog, so we blew them up. So that kind of takes care of our uh, godlike power. Um, but um, the other side of our brutal combat equation is that if uh, heroes need crazy effects to punch up their personality, that monsters also need really insane impact effects as well. So to start off, we focused on just impacts alone. Uh, you're going to hit monsters a lot in this game, and we, you're going to see a lot of blood because of that. And we didn't want the blood to get too monotonous, so we started out by just making a ton of different kind of blood sprays. 
And then uh, Diablo is a game where there's all sorts of kinds of damage, and you need to be able to get an idea when you're hitting somebody which kind of damage is, is actually happening on that monster. So we made different impact effects for each of the damages. We have, uh, at this point, fire, cold, lightning, poison, and a new kind of uh, damage called arcane. But uh, we took it a little bit farther in that critical hits are a much bigger deal in Diablo 3 than in past games. So what we did there was we took all of those uh, hit effects that we had and we just made really much louder versions of each of them to kind of highlight that when, when those events are happening. So uh, with all that hitting happening, you know you're going to be killing a lot of monsters as well. So we really wanted to pump up the player's sense of impact on monsters. So uh, in Diablo 3, the majority of monsters die using ragdoll physics. And we really like this because it uh, gives, uh, allows the player to really interact with the monsters um, when you kill them. Depending on what kind of damage or you know, the force that you're hitting them with, they're going to die in a different way. And then you can kind of set up little circumstances where you can like, knock them off of ledges or make them go flying. But also, because uh, there's all these different damage types in the game, we also wanted monsters that die from different types of damage to have a sort of elemental flavored death. So if you hit them with fire, they don't just play their ragdoll death, they play like a fiery ragdoll death, or a poisony ragdoll death, or lightning. And since we're making a big deal about critical hits, we also wanted to make a really big deal about critical deaths. So when you hit a monster with critical damage and you kill them, they literally explode. Now, you may have noticed that a lot of things in this game are exploding. <laughs> and there's a really good reason for that. And it kind of comes from a really complica complicated formula that we developed on our own to sort of guide us through the process of like when should something explode, when should it explode, and how does that work. And so I'm going to get that, that uh, here we go. 